Hello, I'm Lux, and wow, so many questions, so little answers. <laughs> and I'm Ember, and dang, this show keeps getting prettier. We recently rewatched the Ruby Red trailer. It's amazing how much more they're able to do now. And as you can tell, this is our thoughts on Ruby, Volume 6, Episode, or Chapter 1 and 2. And please excuse Ember if he's a little bit quiet. Yeah, uh, let's just say issues and leave it at that. So we're going to try to keep this shorter than our usual four-hour session. I mean... <laughs> Not that you'll be able to tell a difference in the final recording. At least I hope. <laughs> so many questions. So much prettier. They've come a long way since they've been using Poser. The action is quicker than it has been in the previous seasons slash volumes which is apparently a major complaint of those previous volumes because apparently ohm did less talking and more cutting compared to the current directors who did more talking and less cutting but you can understand it because they're building up a story and they've had to rewrite some stuff and do some tweaking to how they originally planned to have things go so there's a lot of inconsistencies with certain parts of the past but even ohm changed things yes you can't entirely blame the changes and inconsistencies on the new team. A lot was planned out in advance, and recall that plans rarely survive the first encounter. Especially with a fan base as rabid as we have now on the internet. Where before, it took a lot of effort to get a show removed or changed, now the ravening hordes can descend to the internet and protest vocally and violently and incredibly easily and destroy careers in an instant. But on to the matter at hand of these two well-done episodes. I like how they start with a piece of the past, and then they go to the present. At the beginning of each episode, they do basically a flashback, and then they go into the actual episode. In the first episode, that gave us a nice chunk of action to get everybody pumped up, and I think we're getting a more even disbursement between action and story progression. And I love how I called it on the old lady. Not that the direction and camera angles didn't make it entirely obvious, but I was like, she's going to be important. Yes, yes, she is important. And we've only watched the first two episodes so far. And so what remains to be seen is my column, whether or not she has silver eyes. Ah, I was thinking that too, once you brought that up as we were watching the episodes. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Also, I love your comment, which I also agree with, like, that looks like an older Katara. A great deal. Right down to the coloring, the hairstyle, and the overall design. Very northern tribal. And it's going to be interesting when we get the answers to answer, I should say, to that question that Ruby asked. Because I have a feeling it's going to drive a wedge between Yang and Ozpin. But I have a feeling Ruby is going to see the real thing that happens, as it were. Ruby's going to understand it better than the others. Ruby's interpretation is going to give her a greater understanding of the motivations and reasons, because she's Ruby. Yang is already incredibly mad at Osbin, and as we see from the intro, so is Jean, which... It takes a lot to get Jean mad. Ruby's going to have a deeper understanding because we've seen how she interacts with other people, how she's been able to speak with Oscar, how she's been able to hold her team together, how Juniper listens to her, how she gets the guy to turn the turrets off. All of it is a depth of understanding and communication. So whatever is revealed in Jen's answering of the question, she's going to have probably a more balanced perspective. And what's really interesting is how Jen answers the question. Everyone gets to see the same thing, but they're all going to interpret it differently. And they're all separated, so they don't all know for sure that they're all seeing the exact same thing. 
So they're going to come back with their experiences through their own filters. And as any djinn, that's probably the catch. Because there's always a catch to the way a djinn grants your wish. Mm -hmm. And I almost thought that Ruby was going to dismiss Jen without asking a question and circle back to it later. Because they only get two. But, you know, Osben's half-truths are really hurting. Because he said, oh, yes, it was already used before I sealed it. And then Jen reveals... Only one question was used. So Yang's just seeing that as another lie. And a lot of what she is interpreting, she is in Yang, because there's a lot of ladies, is colored by Raven's explanations in the camp. And how Raven stopped trusting Ozpin after a particular incident. And just like he says, he has reasons for his actions. And he's definitely even... With probably what we're going to see, which is probably going to be really bad. I think Ozpin is still on the side of good, as it were. On the side of making things better for people. Because realistically, good and bad are points of view. It's just whatever is better for the majority. Is pretty much what he's going with. I don't think Ozpin is a bad guy. But he could very easily be interpreted that way because of the rationale of his actions. Because he's coming at them from such a different perspective. Because he's lived so many lives. And speaking of that, in the intro, when we pan past that handful of people and then to Osben and Oscar, I think those are all past lives. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't think of it that way. I was thinking of it as another group of people that he also guided in the past or was part of. But you're right. That's very, like, Avatar-esque. Mm-hmm. Very much so. And staying in the intro, oh boy, Crow. I, I know that the, the drink can be a devil and take you down, but that looked a little too literal. Yeah, and it leads right into Ruby being isolated as well. So I have a feeling we're looking at another minor split of the group by the end of this season. Ruby's probably going to be captured. Something terrible is going to happen to Crow. Yang and Blake. Something's going to happen to them together. Probably involving Adam because Adam's still obsessed with Blake. And killing his own people left and right. That reminded me because we talked about Yang. That poor Hunter's arm. Oh my god. I'm surprised he still had it. I know. I really thought he was going to lose it there. Not just have a bruised arm. <laughs> I was expecting more like, I'm missing a limb. How inconvenient. Yeah, but, you know, we already did that a while back, so. And this <laughs> gives an opportunity for Jean to show off his healing abilities. And amplification of his abilities, because his ability isn't to heal per se, it's to increase the person's natural ability to heal. Because aura by itself can heal. It just takes a while depending on the person. He just boosts that natural ability, so you heal quicker. This is why he could boost Ren to mask the train. Which was really cool. It was super cool. And I love how Ruby took everything in and went, okay everyone. Shh, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. She has the ability to see through to the heart of a situation. The real problem is her level of innocence. Though that may be part of it. It could be. Because going back to season one, victory is in a simple soul. And it's definitely going to be interesting what we find out about Salem. But as you said at the end of the episode, as long as she doesn't turn out to be a jilted lover, I'm okay. Yeah, I'll still be okay, but I'll be slightly disappointed, because that's almost always the thing in this situation. It's always the trope. This guy broke my heart, now I want revenge on the world. Could the world please portray women with a little more depth than that? Yeah. Did you catch more of the intro's lyrics? Than I did, because even with the second time when we had the volume up more, I wasn't able to catch it. Not much. Very little. And not even enough to really begin an analysis. 
Yeah, I'm going to have to like, listen to it with earphones. On loop. Which is kind of funny in hindsight when you listen to the soundtracks from the previous seasons, you go, aha. I mean, even watching through the trailers, you go, aha. Because even though Ruby seems to be one of the more simple trailers, in the beginning, she's walking away from Summer Rose's grave. So a quick little thing about the original Red trailer is she's based on Little Red Riding Hood. And what is she attacking? Wolves. I love that little thing right there. Other things in the intro, like Salem's going to get really ticked off at something. Oh, yeah. Also, I did catch one particular line about the powers that be, and it focuses on the evil group. So I think they're currently in charge of more things than anyone really knows. Well, that's how evil works. It's insidious. And I also like how there's hidden people in the intro. There's this person that's fighting in the shadows at one point. There's this hooded figure that we don't find out until episode two is, like no one guessed this, Cinder. So yes, Cinder survived. So we still have a maiden in play who apparently was still well enough to murder an innocent woman and steal all of her possessions. When I first saw that scene and I saw the yellow robe up here, I'm like, two. I got two. Ha ha ha. Out comes to the situation. One, she fools this person and they help her. Or two, she kills them. I'm voting for two, but the other one would have been interesting too. Well, I was also wondering with her grim and maiden abilities if she could somehow pull an Oz and take over the body. Ah, I thought of that too as well right after the eye lit up i was like also two outcomes on that <laughs> one she kills the person and two she possesses the body based on what happened she went with option number one yes because it was somebody's life savings yeah <laughs> just like crow said you know when yang's like just my luck it's not your luck i like little subtle hints like that little cutbacks to certain things and in that case, it's two factors. One, Crow's semblance. And two, if Crow knows about the tendency of the relic, also a tie back to that. Which also may be why this relic is attracting Grimm as well. It was actually still active. I have a feeling if you used up all the wishes in it, wishes, Jin, all the questions in it, it would become a dormant relic until the hundred years is up. Also, by the way the Jin phrased it, I think no matter when you use the questions, it will reset. So if you waited till almost the end of the 100-year period, you could use up all three questions in a row. It would reset, then you could use the next three. So you could get a total of six questions in a row. I think so, too, because, you know, things are tricky like that. Because apparently it doesn't matter when in the hundred years you use them. Because there's two questions left before the relic was sealed. And she said, in this period. Which means the clock has already started. They're in the, somewhere in that hundred year period. So I'm thinking it would reset back to three after that hundred year period. But it wouldn't be carryover. No, there's no carryovers. And no, Nora, there's no wishing for more questions. <laughs> or asking for more, more questions. questions. Oh my goodness, her expression. Uh, yeah, that hack don't think would work. Even if you were able to wish for more wishes, you know the djinn would do something. Because djinn in classic tales are nothing like in Disney's Aladdin. They are tricky. You know how Aladdin tricked the genie? That happened all the time in those stories. Because Jin usually didn't like being summoned and were very annoyed at having a master. Just all the possibilities. And, of course, Salem is all pretty in the past. She actually still looks pretty good now, but... But she looks downright evil. Mm-hmm. She looks much softer in the beginning of this story-told flashback. Also, I'm enjoying that Oscar is managing to force control more often because during the final fight sequence last season, Oz forcibly took over. This time, Oscar's resisting more, both on the train and then outright thwarting Oz by stopping him from taking the relic back from Ruby 
and managing to gasp out enough information before Oz takes control. So whatever Oz thinks, Oscar still believes in Ruby. I think Oz still believes in Ruby too, but he's so used to keeping everything close to his vest because of all the previous experiences he's had. Because, like he said, Lionheart wasn't the first, only the most recent. How many times over the generations has he been betrayed? Even just in this generation, because Raven left. Raven, Lionheart, how many others? Just in this cycle, and that's not counting all the lives he's lived before. And even partial betrayals, partial twisting of what he's told people, like how Ironheart is interpreting the situation. And it's definitely going to be interesting once they all get back to, um, what, what was the name? Atlas. Atlas. <laughs> when they all get back to Atlas. This is going to be real interesting how her father and stepbrother? Or... We haven't gotten a clear answer on that because it's very strange that he doesn't have power. So it's going to be interesting when those two encounter Wise again, especially when Wise goes, Hi, family. I've brought company. <laughs> this is Ruby. This is Yang. She will gladly kick your tail. So will she. But one second, I have to finish introducing everything. This is Blake. Oh, and this is their uncle. <laughs> and all of them will gladly kick your tails. Oh, and while I was at it, we stopped and picked up Winter on the way. So it's a real family reunion. <laughs> uh, though that makes me wonder where... Is and what is she up to? Uh, give me a second here. I can clearly see her in my head. The assistant to Ozpin. Glinda. Glinda. What is Glinda up to? Guarding the Haven Relic? I don't know. Did she survive? I'm pretty sure she did. I just want to know. Because that just hit me. He's like, where is Glinda? We haven't. Glinda? Glinda? Hansel. Hansel. So, what's the most interesting thing you thought of so far for all the information you've gotten? How Crow is going to fall. Mm. How Blake and Yang are going to run back into Adam. Because specifically, they're going to run into Adam. It's not just that Adam is the cause of the rift between them, the start of the cause. They're going to run into Adam again. And... How Oscar and Osbin are going to weather this season. Because yeah. it's going to be a great deal of difficulty. Because Ozpin and Oscar eventually have to merge. Based on all prior experience. And now they're actively fighting each other. I think this will change Ozpin for the better. Because it sounds like he also gets elements from the people he basically merges with is an amalgamation and i think oscar's goodness and more innocent faith and belief is something that oz really needs at this point because he's like the grizzled old veteran that's seen so many battles that they're predicting everything through their existing filters He's going to give a fresh perspective on things and maybe allow him to be a little bit more open about stuff, which may be the bridge that will reconnect him and Yang so they can actually work together with Ruby and the rest. Because I have a feeling Ruby is going to still, she's going to be wary, way more wary of Ospin, but she still won't lose trust and faith in what he's trying to do. No, she'll still believe in the goal, but she will question the means. You know, and Yang has a huge stake in this because it's because of her that they have the relic. Because she convinced Raven to leave it behind. Here's a question. Does Raven know how to use the relic? How long ago was the relic sealed? Did Raven ask the last question? Or was it Ozpin? I'm saying, did Raven ask something similar to what Ruby asked? Hmm. 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 Interesting. Or did her becoming a maiden reveal that to her? Or did she... No, she became a maiden after she left Ozpin. Yes, because okay. she found and killed the maiden. Supposedly. 
very likely, heavily implied, also in the realms of interesting things, uh, the lovely little spider group. At first, when Cinder first saw the sign, I thought it might be more of a direct link back to Salem, because the Grimm that's in Cinder's system is very much spider-based. But we gained a lot of information from that because, oh, that big guy was asking about those kids. Mm. So one of Salem's generals was already looking for them. And it was smart of the, inf I'm just going to call her the information broker. It was smart of the information broker to say, give us one week. Because what they're actually going to do is probably also look into this person asking questions to see if there's anyone asking questions about her. And see who will pay more money. Well, that's the thing. She's a spider at the center of the web. So she's... All of the people are actually her, not her spiders. They're her spider web. And it's through the tensions there that she gets the information. And did you notice the color theme for her and her lackeys? Very purple. I have a feeling anyone with those colors are... Um... Going to be spiders in this area. Well, specifically spiders that are very closely attached to her. Because if you look at the other people, they weren't wearing those same colors. No, but they all had the spider markings. Mm -hmm. So I think everyone else is hired people. Anyone wearing those colors are people that are close to her, like friends, family. Higher level subordinates, mm -hmm. like how of how Emerald was to send her. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to go over, like how awesome that music was, or all the all the background and concept art <laughs> at the ends of the episodes? All amazing, incredibly detailed. We'll do an in-depth lyric analysis once we're actually fully absorbing the lyrics, but right now we're just at, ooh, pretty bad stuff's going to happen. Yeah, we got the general gist. This season's going to be one of those ones that's probably going to end a halfway. It won't be bad bad for the heroes but i won't be really good for the heroes either when you tally up the score for this season it's probably going to be stalemate so should we wrap things up oh yeah and this has been our thoughts on ruby volume six episodes one and two hello and welcome to the very end of our episode glad you made it hope you enjoyed the trip getting here i know i know it's gonna be the usual spiel please subscribe to our channel please click like please share Please, when you subscribe, ring the bell, all that fancy stuff. Also, if you'd like a commission, I do do those. Give me money with a description of what you want drawn, and I will give it back to you after approval and so forth. Also, if you want to look at the rest of my art and peruse it, there's links down below for DeviantArt, Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr. All those various sites. You can usually find me online under Luxbrush or... Alex Knight, I believe the DeviantArt one is under. There's also a Patreon. It is wonderful. For $1 a month, you get to um, make suggestions, and I might end up drawing them, because I'll put them in a poll. Everyone will get to vote on them, and then I'll draw it. Also, if you there's higher tiers. Go and read up on those. If you just like to donate, there's coffee. It's $3, one-time thing. It's very good. Also, we have another video series on this channel where we read children's books that we enjoyed in the past and give our thoughts on them as we read them. It's very entertaining. It may even be soothing. Go ahead, listen to it as you're going to bed. Bedtime stories. Awesome. Thanks, and now over to Ember. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions, and, of course, financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.